Your 2018 Supporter Shield winners, the New York Red Bulls. Jimmy Conrad, are you an oracle? Because you called this one. It wasn't that hard of a call, <laughs> let's be honest. I knew they were going to be the Supporter Shield winner. Congratulations to them and to Chris Armas in particular. Uh, it's a big deal for him to take over the team, you know, halfway through the season and to lead them to what is, what is their there? third Supporter Shield in the last six years. Pretty remarkable Which begs two questions for me. One, are they considered a dynasty now? Bobby brought this up off camera. Three supporter shield out of six years, maybe, right? Uh, and the second thing, the second thing, is this more Chris Armas' team or is it more Jesse Marsh's team still? I, he just we, will get, we will get to all of that, but further in the east, a weather delay in Columbus put a little wrinkle in that all 11 game starting at once thing. There was a lightning delay, but it doesn't matter, Kalen, because Columbus are in yeah, after Col the Montreal loss. Columbus has come out with the right, <clears throat> right attitude. Jesse's artist with the goal. This is still a developing story because we have to watch the East seeding to see who's going to play. Right, right now, they would be playing against DC United if this result holds, but uh, they are safely in the playoffs, safely which is nice. In. Yeah. yeah. Right now they're fifth. They could drop to six, but I don't think that's going to happen. Still see, as we mentioned, that game's still going on. But Doyle, mm -hmm. out in the West, the Galaxy were in control of their mm -hmm. own playoff destiny. Alas, we get no playoffs. Lots on. RSL grabbing that sits and final spot up. Uh, it's, not, it's not just no playoffs Laton. There was no decision days Laton. He, he absolutely laid an egg. He was supposed to be the best player on the field. He was not. Now, the Galaxy were great for, you know, the opening half hour or so. But then once they got up 2-0, they, they stopped defending the way that they've been defending throughout this decent run over the past month. They decided to bunker into their own end. They invited Houston forward. And look, the Galaxy choked. Mm -hmm. They absolutely choked. They had a 2-0 lead. This is... Like, they had a 2 0 lead. They were in the playoffs. They choked. They're out of the playoffs. It is the biggest last day collapse I can ever remember oh. seeing a team suffer in this league. We're speaking of superlatives oh, that is a bold call. now. Yeah, wow. Superlatives are coming The only, the only, coming the only out. other one that comes close is, is Toronto FC on the final day, 2009. They lost 5-0, I think, to that awful Red Bulls team. Uh, this was worse because they had a 2-0 at the half, and they just gagged. It oh, was my awful. God. Okay, well, well let's, ha in happier news, Sporting KC earning that top spot in the <laughs> West. Jimmy's a happy guy, but Bobby, how do you feel about this? I think it's well deserved by SKC. They've really been the team that's been playing the best overall. The results haven't gone their way, but now all of a sudden we're seeing a team that was playing well and now finding ways to win. SKC, it's nice to see a team that deserves to be the top team actually get that seeding. Yeah, right. I don't deserve. I don't disagree with that. Like they, they probably have played the best, other than maybe Seattle, second half of the season in this Western Conference for sure. All right. Well, let's take a look at the Western Conference standings. Is this, guys? When we look at this, is this what we anticipated seeing at the beginning of the day? Because it's not for me. I'm just I, saying. I don't think anybody anticipated Dallas losing 2-1 at Colorado. And again, um, that was that was a lead that they blew, and it knocked them down from second place to fourth. They, in the second half of the season, though, Dallas have not been good. They're six, seven, and four. That's I mean, not great. It, for me, it begs the question: How important is it to win that last? regular season game to get some momentum going into the playoffs. Because if you're Dallas now, you're limping in. You lost to Colorado of all teams. You can't be feeling great about yourself. No, absolutely not. Kalen. Well, you're not the, the big shock was the Galaxy. That you'd expect them to have 
uh, taking care of business at home against Houston. Lost in all this, we might want to give Houston some credit. I oh, mean, hey. yeah, they came out and put together an, an incredible. Says performance. the former Houston Dynamo. You always exactly. find a way. Man. Always yeah. find, yeah. find a way. 19 always goals by Amaro Minotas. I mean, this is a game two nil down at halftime. They could have just packed it in and said, "Hey guys, sure. look, you know, maybe well, next year." And this is it. But they came out in second half with a renewed energy. Well, it looked like they packed it in from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like they were just going to roll over for the Galaxy. Sure. <sighs> and, and congrats to RSL, by the way. Like, yes. like, yeah. RSL had to watch this unfold. I'm, like, I, if I was an RSL player, I would have gone to walk my dog or something <laughs> at, at halftime and not come back. And, and, you know, they had no way of expecting what Houston did. Don't we, you have cats? We, I do. <laughs> I would have tried to walk the cats. It's not, <laughs> yeah. that is hard. It's not easy. <laughs> That's a hard <laughs> it's thing not easy. to do. Oh, my gosh, we're already going off the rails, and I kind of love it. Uh, but, you guys, this is so exciting because it's bracket time. We can now officially talk brackets, and I'm sending it over to my good friend Bobby Warshaw, who's standing by at the board to take a look at the West here. How's it, how's it shaken uh, out? I want to answer the question you just posed. Does the West bracket feel right? And it might not have been what we predicted at the beginning of the day, but it actually feels to me that this is the right order of teams, that SKC are the best team in the West right now. Seattle are second, maybe fighting to be best. RSL is sixth. LAFC is third. So it feels right. It feels like everyone fell, fell into the proper place in the standings. We should point out here is when you look at this, it recedes after the first round. So say RSL does beat LAFC. RSL actually would not play Seattle. They would play Sporting Kansas City, and whoever's in the top bracket would go down to the bottom bracket. So guys, I'm okay with the way this sorted out today. It feels like everyone's in their right spot heading into the playoffs. Do you feel like there's a gap between the top two teams and the, and the other four? A minor gap, but not a big enough gap for that random part of so soccer to take its place. That's fair. Crazy, crazy. All right, well, let's take a look at how it looks in the East. The Eastern Conference standings, a reminder that Columbus game still going on. So these are live standings. This is how it stands right now with Philadelphia in that sixth spot. Columbus um, currently in fifth, depending on their result. What, uh, same question, guys. Is this, is this what we anticipated? I, I mean, I didn't expect NYCFC to come out today and destroy Philly the way they did. It was it, NYCFC's best performance in months mm -hmm. and months and months. Maybe, you know, just having Herrera back, having David Villa healthy, having Medina, you know, maybe it was just a talent differential. Um, uh, Right now, like the, the way they play at home, the way DC play at home, it feels like those fifth and sixth place teams, they got a lot of work. Matt, I spoke with Claudio Arena this week, and, and he seemed confident. He, he kept talking about getting the group and their best guys together. Mm -hmm. Now, that, ha that wasn't able to happen due to injuries and a congested schedule for a while. Today you saw what they can do putting that Philadelphia Union team under pressure, making them make their own errors in the box, that small field at Yankee Stadium. And the bad news for Philly is they're going to have to come back here potentially midweek. Do they even have to travel home again. at that point? You just yeah. stay in New York and train. Well, they only That's came it. in yesterday actually for the match. So they might actually try and change something up because just to get away from the routine of this loss and get that taste out of you. Well, let me ask you this. Is it kind of an advantage then that you're playing two times back to back in such like over the course of four days at the stadium because we know Yankee Stadium's the pitch is the smallest in the league the sight lines are mm -hmm. weird it feels different all the players say it feels different so having this 90 minutes under your belt even though it was a bad 90 minutes maybe it just gets you used to it for that knockout round game. well I was going to say on the flip side now does NYCFC have that moment that was my question do, because does they won change, that last game because they had their best performance does it change the way you feel about NYCFC coming it, into the playoff this one game it because does for we me. were we were very very down on yeah. them the last few weeks as you mentioned so no it does for me 100 yeah. percent and it's because they have all their players at their disposal now it makes a big difference it does all right hey Bobby, Hi, Bobby. you look lonely just, over no, there no, I'm going to start us off you. as we look at the East bracket just giving the update Columbus is still winning two to nothing meaning they were currently in the fifth seed to Philadelphia in the sixth seed but guys I also want to scold us for a second because we always do this <laughs> the team is missing their star players and we talk about what is wrong with them and we don't just think about the fact that maybe what was wrong with them is they were missing their star players we did it with Seattle earlier in the year we did with Toronto earlier in the year, that got a little more complicated. And we did it with NYCFC. When you're missing Yonhel Herrera, you're missing Jesus Medina, you're missing Maxime Morales, you're not going to be as good as when you have them. So maybe we shouldn't have been as surprised as we were to see them beat Philadelphia. But still, this comes down to home games for me. If you are DC United, if you are NYCFC, to play at home is a huge advantage, more so of an advantage than just other teams in the league. Guys, big wins for them today, and they're going to feel good about being able to play at home. Mm-hmm, indeed. All right, well, guys, we want to hear from you. We have a poll question for you, so get on our MLS Twitter account and vote which away team will win their knockout round game. 
Let us know your thoughts. Do you guys want to weigh in on this? Portland. Portland. I know Portland doesn't usually do great in, in Texas, but Dallas it, have not been have not been good for about three and a half months now. Portland kind of found themselves over the last month and a half. Now, granted, they didn't get the win today, but this was the B team. So they're going to have their A team players out and healthy and, and ready to go on Wednesday or Thursday. For me, this might sound crazy, but the last time RSL backed into the playoffs, they ended up winning the whole MLS <laughs> Cup in 2009. They backed in again. They had rest from this weekend, didn't have to play, didn't have to deal with all the pressure to sit on their couch just like us and watch the games. Now they've got this new lease on life. I think they're going to be a tough opponent for LAFC. Yeah. I think they can do it. Fairly nothing to lose at this point. All right. Yeah? So okay. who do you like? Who's your road team? I, 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 I've won one road game in the playoffs before. It's no easy task. I generally like the home team in this fixture. And I actually think that team is the team that can then go on to win. I agree. Uh, because you play at home, say NYCFC beats Philly at home, which I would pick them to do at this point. Uh, and then they play the next round. They stay at home again, right? And then you can, if you get a 2-0 lead in that one, you can really put some pressure on the team above you. So uh, I, I'm, I'm worried about this Philadelphia team. I, I think the ex inexperience at the back. That sounds like a non-answer to me, but yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's Caitlin Carr special right there. I love Caitlin Carr. I'm non-committal. <laughs> love it. All right, you guys, well, a good day if you are a Red Bulls fan. And right now we are going to send it on out to Andrew Wiebe, who is standing by with Bradley Wright Phillips. So you're just collecting supporter shields at this point, huh, BWB? Where do you keep these things? <laughs> it feels like that. Um, nah, it's crazy because the first one I didn't play too many games, so I didn't feel that much a part of it. But, you know, the last two have been amazing, man. As a player, I think these are the most difficult ones to win. You know, you've got to prove you're the best team in both conferences and you know we've managed to do that three times so I'm just honored to be in this squad and this establishment. Did you watch the score? The Toronto score and Atlanta score? Did you, know you glance? Do you know what? I, I didn't and you know who, who came up to me on the field? I think it was Kaku came and said to me Toronto are winning 1-0 and I was just like let's go man let's go. <laughs> Thank you Toronto. 71 points. Last year we were celebrating 69. You guys did it two better. What does that mean to you to be the team that set a points record in Major League Soccer? It's amazing. I remember uh, Toronto done it and feeling really jealous, you know, just, you know, because the teams that are doing the best, that's what you want to emulate and you want to you do those things. But I think us getting that record is amazing, but it's, it's what we set out to do in the beginning of the season. Obviously not break records, but to finish with higher points than we did last season. And we've done that. Whether you break the record or not, we've done that. We've improved. So it's a good feeling. One thing left. It's a thing that this club has never won that wants more than anything. How much do you feel that way? Yeah, man. I feel like it has to. We have to do it. You know, with the squad we got, we've got to, we've got to give it our all because these guys behind, every one of them, I adapt up. They're telling me they want the cup, and you know, there's going to be other teams out there, obviously, that want it. But we got to, we got to give it our all because it's been a long time. You know, Red Bulls. They got the shield. They want the cup. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you guys. Okay, so they have the shield. They want the cup in the big grand scheme of things. This is their third supporter shield that they've won. How important is this for the Red Bulls or are, is this, are they just more focused on the big prize at this point? I, I think if you asked them and if you asked most players and coaches in the league, do you want the shield or the cup? They would take the cup. That's not what you would take, I know. Uh, it's not what I would take, but, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the best the best thing in, in, in the world is and, because you win the uh, the shield and the cup. It's mm -hmm. the endless power of and, and yeah. that's what they have to do over mm -hmm. this next month, Jimmy Conrad. But you, you guys talk about, oh, is this a dynasty? I, I mean, that's insane to me. I, I'm sorry, and, you know, you guys criticize me for not giving hot takes, but, look, this is, <laughs> it, it, I don't remember any of the supporter shield winners from the years that I played in MLS. Wow. I do remember the Galaxy winning a couple of MLS Cups. I do remember uh, Salt Lake winning MLS Cup. <laughs> you remember the teams that win MLS Cup? That's the way our league is. Yes, okay. The supporter shield is growing in importance over time, and it matters deeply to the fans and the product you put on the field over the course of a long time. But look, this is the U.S. This is North America. This is how we measure greatness in the biggest moments in the playoffs, and the Red Bulls haven't done it yet. No, this is a good hot take. By the way, I appreciate that. Also, I want to give a shout out to the Red Bulls because once they got rid of Dax McCarty, I was like, what are they doing? 
And then they got rid of Sasha Clutch, and what are they doing? Mm -hmm. But yet they found a way to continue to have success, and I think that's a testament to their vision overall as a team. And they're not spending as much money as some of the other bigger teams like Toronto FC. Well, it's a, it's a play your kids thing, right? The guy who got the goal today, Derek Etienne, a, a product of their academy. Their best player this year, I think, all around has been Tyler Adams, a product of the academy. Sean Davis was huge, a product of the academy. Aaron Long, who came through their USL team. They've built this team a different way than I think most everybody else in MLS has built. And the fact that they could not just win the shield, but set a points record while doing it, going, I think, plus 30 in goal differential while doing it, surviving multiple competitions, because remember, they started the year playing in CCL and played really well in that while doing it. Like, it I, I wish more teams that understood Toronto's this. excuse about yeah, why they right? didn't do well. But no, I, honestly, I, I wish more teams understood this, that if you are committed to, to identifying and developing and playing local talent, you can win at a high level. And if you don't think you can do that, take a look at who just lifted the shield. Woo! All hot right, take. it's getting a heated. Takes, yeah. A lot of hot takes. You guys, just getting word. Columbus up 2-1 against Minnesota ooh, right now with ooh, about 10 ooh. minutes left. So... Just, you know, change some keep that keep that in your back pocket. Uh, right now, we are going to send it back out to Andrew Weeby, who is standing by with Aaron Long. Here with Aaron Long of the Supporters Shield champions. We didn't know if that was going to be the case tonight. I saw on the scoreboard all night long the scores. Did you watch it all, or were you focused on the game? I kept peeking up there. I didn't want to. I tried my hardest not to look, but I kept peeking up there. Um, I heard someone say at halftime as well that that they were losing two 0 uh, yeah, I try my best not to look, but it's hard not to, you know. Can't let Derek Etienne get his head down, though, right? Second half, he's going to do what he does. I mean, he's such a skilled player. He's, he's, he's so, so good, man. And we told him at halftime, let it go. His confidence never wavered. I mean, I mean, he puts a special goal like that in the back of the net to win it for us. How amazing for him. Tyler Adams running around saying, we want the cup. You've got Chris Arma saying to these fans, we're going after what's next, which is a thing we haven't won in 23 years. This is great. You've done it before. What does MLS Cup mean? Yeah, MLS Cup is the next goal. we got to put this behind us after tonight. Uh, I mean, we're going to go after it with everything, so we're looking forward to it. Aaron Long, Supporter Shield champion. Confetti flying here at Rebel Arena. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Andrew. Well, one of the things I find most remarkable about Red Bulls winning the Supporter Shield is that this was a team that had a coaching change in the middle of the season, and Chris Armas seamlessly took over that job for Jesse Marsh, and they just didn't miss a beat. And I know that he had been with the team for a while, so that system was in place, but especially when you look at what happened with NYCFC, with the departure of Patrick Vieira, for me this makes this even more remarkable. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's not surprising to me actually. You know, I played for I played with Chris Armas and mm -hmm. for him in Chicago. Uh, one of the best leaders I've ever played against. I'm sure you guys played together with the national team, Jimmy. And, and just able to really galvanize a group and and really give his own slant to this team. Mm -hmm. He's changed a little bit as Bobby broke down the pregame, being at times pressure, at times being able to drop off. But but the main thing really is his character and his personality within the group to be able to uh, push this forward. And that's why I think he, they have a real chance. I think they're the favorites. Clearly for MLS Cup at this point, uh, and it's because of his mentality. No! Jimmy! It's, favorites is hard when they've never done it before. They're known mm -hmm. to choke when it comes to this. They, they do the Supporter Shield, which I think, again, is a very mm -hmm. significant trophy, but they seem to have a tough time getting past when things get really tight, how they, 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 they can't find a goal when they need a goal. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Bradley Wright Phillips just can't hit the back of the net. I want to know if they have enough options to do that. They've shown that so far. They have a plus 29 goal difference, which is really impressive, but when games get a little bit tight, maybe things change. And as you said, I actually like the number three and number four seeds in the playoffs because they have a little bit more momentum. They're already in that playoff mindset uh, heading into that that first leg of this. And uh, give Etienne credit for coming back from his penalty miss for a young player. Yeah. It does worry me a little bit, though, that he's the one on the spot to begin with. I, I wouldn't expect to see that to change. Or to stay the same, Kaku, you would imagine, would step up and take that one. Uh, but, hey, young player, Listen, that was important for his confidence. Well, speaking of Derek Etienne, this is a perfect segue to send it over to Bobby Warshaw at the board to yeah. break down that goal. And we should point out, Kaku's last penalty, he missed again against Atlanta. So maybe that factored into Etienne Jr. taking it. But, guys, let's take a look at this goal and keep in mind that this young player just missed a penalty kick. I mean, does this look like a, a early 20s guy who had just had a bad miss and a chance to win a trophy? I think not. Jimmy Cotter, what needs to happen defensively here? He's got to force him wide, please, for me. Yeah, you got to keep him wide. Overcommit there. He doesn't have to 
This feels like the biggest mistake in MLS right now. Keep them wide when you can keep them wide, guys. Defensively, they let themselves down. But also, I loved how Derek Etienne Jr. took that little pause. He goes to shoot. He goes to shoot. He feels the situation. He sees the defender coming in, and then he cuts it back. That pause goes so far, and that's what the top attackers have. They don't just have skill. They have ability to pause when the game is going fast and make the next decision. And that's going to have to be one of the guys who, who elevates the Red Bulls. If they are going to be elevated next month, and again, we've never, we've never seen that from them. It can't all fall on BW. WP's shoulders. It's going to have to be Etienne. It's going to be have to Alex uh, have to be Alex Mawil, who played well in this one. Not a super goal threat. And then uh, Daniel Royer, who, who's coming back from an injury a little bit. He should be fresh. He should be good to go next weekend when the Red Bulls finally play. They ha they have to get uh, they have to get goals from their wings. Um, they they haven't routinely got that in the playoffs the last couple of years. It has cost them. This feels like their best shot. They feel like the best team in the league. They've owned other playoff teams, whether it be Atlanta or NYCFC, uh, DC. You know, even with DC playing well, Red Bulls were still able to go down there and get a 3-3 draw last month. So, like, this this feels like it, and it has to be at the end. It has to be Royer. It can't all fall on BWP. And they need Robles to make some big saves, right? You need your goalkeeper mm -hmm. to make big saves. You need your defense to tighten things up. I think in the playoffs as well, you have a plan A, and usually playoff, other playoff teams will cut that out for the most part. 90% of the time it's not going to work, maybe 95% of the time. So what's your plan B? What's your plan C? How far down the list can you go, and will those guys step up, which is to your point. Who's going to step up and, and be the guys that can kind of fill the void if B BWP is marked by three guys in the box at all times? They've had good teams before in the past, some of that you mentioned, Jimmy, but this feels like their best chance at an MLS Cup. And partly it's because, well, that's happening with Atlanta United. Mm -hmm. Joseph, uh, he got the penalty today, but doesn't look the same player that he was early in the season when he was scoring for fun. The questions with their health with Almiron and Vialba, and then the distraction of Martino leaving the team at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. The door is open for the Red Bulls. It's just can they get over? Over that mental hurt hurdle and I think Chris Arms is the guy to help him do it. All right well guys I'm getting a quick update from that Columbus Minnesota game. This one is all tied up at oh two goals goodness. apiece thanks to two goals from Francisco Calvo. Here's some highlights. Woo! Francisco Calvo. Hello. Apparently the the, the striker that uh, should have gotten the DP so that contract. Was his, that was his first goal and he and scores he, again here. Oh, that's just a sloppy. Brace on the day. That's just sloppy on the back <laughs> line. Look, and this knocks this knocks Columbus down from fifth to sixth place. So now with the score as it is, it mm -hmm. would be uh, Philly going to D.C. Okay. in the knockout round, and then Columbus going to NYCFC. So that whole segment we did at the top where I talked about how maybe <laughs> Rona, how maybe <laughs> has a little bit of an advantage because they just played. Thanks, Calvo. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Calvo. I, oh. I mean, it's it's. It's what we've seen around the league today. Teams with nothing to play for going out there and, and still putting in a professional performance. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, we, Kaylin talked about it with, with Houston. And I actually, I'm going to give myself a little bit of credit because on this week in MLS, I did say that I think yeah. <laughs> Minnesota was going to come out and play. I also said that Minnesota was going to win this game. So that's still, yeah, still time. you know, still, hey, yeah. I, I think know. what's disappointing the two goals that we saw that Calvo scored, they're both preventable. One was a set piece, people aren't marking, the other just kind of sloppy mm -hmm. in the back. I mean, that has to be short up if you're going to try to win any kind of trophy at yeah. any level. They just don't seem locked in, but again, luckily for Columbus, uh, the Revs did the job earlier today. They, you know, they, they beat Montreal 1-0. It was not a pretty game, but um, it, maybe that is playing into I was going to say that. Maybe they found out at halftime they were going to be in, and it just didn't yeah. matter as much anymore. Well, well at guys, some point, do you sub some players out, knowing you have a game on Wednesday to rest? It would be interesting to watch these last 10 minutes. Maybe, or maybe they wanted to play NYCFC. I just, just, a reminder, dun, dun, dun. just a reminder for everybody, this is a live look, and this is what is actually happening right now. On this one, Jossi Zard is on a hat trick, by the way. He's got 18 on the season. And um, so he has, you know, all the stuff I was talking about the Red Bulls with the wingers need to step up and carry some of the burden. Uh, that applies tenfold to Columbus. They have not been able to to rely on anything from whether it's, it's Justin Miram, Pedro Santos, or uh, Nico Hans. Okay, well, guys, we're going to keep you updated on that game. But right now, here's a look at the bracket at, as how it stands right now. What do we think? I think Philadelphia's got to be really <laughs> happy. Really? Like just, yeah. Did you see that game? They got smacked at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. They don't want to go back there. Yeah. They don't want to hang out at Yankee Stadium again, especially with the way Philly play, keeping the ball on the ground, between having to play on the surface at Yankee Stadium, on the smaller field. Philadelphia wants to play anywhere but Yankee Stadium right now.
Yeah, that's fair, I agree to that. Mm -hmm. All right, well guys, let's transition here. Let's talk a little bit about Atlanta United, who were in control of that Supporters' Shield race, but couldn't get it done against Toronto. I, heading in, I mean, I, for me, they were the, the clear favorites here, but I don't know, I'm starting to wobble. What's what, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> well, you know, they lost the best player in the league. That doesn't help. <laughs> no. You know, losing Miguel Amiron, Vialba's out, uh, Joseph Martinez, you know, he, he really wants to stay in the box and just finish chances, but when the pieces around him aren't moving properly, it, it, it's, they're not always easy tap-ins for him right now. It was positive just to get him hitting the back of the net once. Sometimes you just need a penalty just to see the ball hit the back of the net. He's been so frustrated the last couple of weeks. And then he'll have a week to rest. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they get Almiron back. They get back to Atlanta and, and get ready for the playoffs. But, you know, they're not in good form right now. Is it is it a case of a team peaking too soon? Can that happen? That, oh, that definitely can yeah. happen, for sure. And, and I also want to give a shout out, though, to Toronto FC. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought they put together a really good performance. It's just a little, too little too late, maybe like three months uh, too late for Toronto FC. But when they put it together and they're all inspired and ready to go, and they're one of the best teams in the league, and I thought they showed that today. And I think that was probably what they were trying to do. That was their purpose. Atlanta's the best team in the league. Let's prove that they're not. It's still mm -hmm. us when we're up for it. Yeah, and, and it, I just want like, Joseph did get his chances today. You know, he had a one-on-one -on -one with Bono, and he and he hit the he hit the post. He wasn't able to find the back of the net. And you're right, like it's, it's really good for them that he did get the penalty and he did convert it. And maybe that'll break him out of his slump. But it like it's not it's not just missing Miguel Almiron. It's this team is not defending the the way they like Chicago was able to build stuff against them last week. The Red Bulls killed them three weeks ago or four weeks ago, and it was. They, and they ended up losing two of their final four games. They went on the road. And, you know, granted, it's on the road at a Toronto team that we've all seen play really well, but it's also a wounded Toronto team, playing without Josie Altidore, playing without Drew Moore, playing without Victor Vasquez, who are all three Rydam and Penn starters. And they had the chance to win a, to win a trophy, and they collapsed. Mm. They collapsed. And, like, the, the penalty could have gotten them back in the game, but instead that made it 2-1, and they just, they just stopped playing. And there's... When I look at this team play, they are not as quick to get pressure to the ball through midfield, and because of that, their defenders are being exposed just like from, from touchline to touchline. Teams are finding gaps against them in ways that three months ago, those gaps didn't exist. Does this change Bobby. your MVP vote? <laughs> I don't know how you could watch this game and not unequivocally believe that Al Moron is the league MVP right now. Look at that team without him, right? He was an outstanding player, and the value he added to his team. You guys were wondering if Zlatan could put a performance that made him MVP. I think Atlanta United tonight put in that performance that showed Miguel Marron is both the most important player and the best overall player in this league. I mean, there's an argument for it, but I'm voting for Joseph. No. Guys, 31 guys. goals. He broke a record. Hold yeah. on. Broke a record. I'm Hold on. Up. You guys, get live, live, updates live updates in my ear. Jazzy Zarda has just scored. Jazzy with yeah. the Hattie. In the 83rd minute, y'all. <laughs> And they just so this this makes it again Columbus back up to to fifth place. So Columbus going to DC and Philly now go into. Oh my goodness! And there's a bit of that productivity that they need from the wings. There's a nice little run and ball from from Nico Hansen and a good near post run from uh, from Jossie with the finish. You guys, my head is spinning. <laughs> How much time do we have to talk about Minnesota's defense? Oh man, <laughs> and are there lack thereof? We so <laughs> last year they gave up last Jimmy. year they gave up 70 goals. I'm this year they've improved <laughs> and given up 71. Okay. That's just the lens I see life through, okay? It's through defending. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, I believe we have David Goss standing by in Toronto with Greg Garza. So right now we're going to send it on out to him. I mean, Greg, quite simply, you knew coming in, you get the result, you win Supporter Shield. What happened today? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, the worst thing that could, could happen to, to end the regular season. But, uh, you know, I think it's a, a moment for us to really go back home in Atlanta, turn the page as quickly as possible, and uh, try and win one trophy out of the year. You you experienced the playoffs a little bit last year. You get a moment like this. What have you learned to try and you know help pep preparation this week, make sure you guys get a win going into the playoffs? Yeah, unfortunately, last year we put ourselves in the position that we only had one game. Uh, now it's a whole different tournament. Uh, at least the playoffs that I've been in uh, in Mexico and, and now in the States, it's a whole different tournament. Uh, so kind of turn the page on the regular season and start a whole, whole new season, uh, short season these next few weeks, and hopefully we can bring home a trophy. You guys came out of the second half locker room flying, struggle at the first half. Where is this team right now? What is what is your identity? Yeah, I think I said it from the very first uh, thing. I think it's one of those moments we really have to forget this game. Uh, very unfortunate result, but uh, I think that we have the, enough talent and enough guys to really step up and uh, hopefully uh, do well in the playoffs.
Okay, so if you're Atlanta United right now, you just lose the supporters' shield. How do you gain back any sort of momentum as you head into the playoffs? And now you've got a few, let's, you know, some time off. What do you do? Well, Doyle mentioned the disappointment. I think you captured it right because if you look at this from an Atlanta United supporter, perspective you had your first club trophy standing right in front of you with one match right now that slipped away now when you start looking at questions towards the playoffs there's no guarantee at all that you're going to be in MLS Cup uh, this is not a divine right and then with the rumored sale of Almiron in the offseason Tata Martino's already announced he's leaving this is all sort of falling apart right in front of you in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> I, I mean, I just want to see how they respond to it, right? Yeah. If you're going to be a big club, you got to deal with yeah. adversity, and some clubs do it better than others, so we'll see what they're made of. <sighs> That's all I'm saying. It's all Put he's saying. Put a real saying, stamp folks. on this, all right? That's all he's saying. Well, one of the, the big storylines that we had following today was the LA Galaxy. If they win, they were in. And they did not, you guys, against Houston. This is a team that had a two-goal lead heading into halftime. We had Bobby and Jimmy up at the board talking about how defensively they had improved over the last few weeks and just kind of a stinker of a performance from the LA Galaxy. What happened here? I want to point out that they improved from where they were, which was giving up 17 goals in four games. They got basically back to average. They weren't a good defensive team. There were still gaps to be had, and they got kind of lucky they hadn't been exploited over those four games. So they didn't improve to the upper echelon of the West. They just improved from being very, very bad at defensively. When I think about this penalty in particular, I think their body lang language changed. Yeah. They went from going, hey, we're in complete control of this to, oh my God, we might lose this. Mm -hmm. And they lost it. And I think that's something they're going to have to fix in the offseason is that collective mindset of being good and being good in all, in all situations and not just faltering or being weak as a, as a group. Bad matchup for them, too, in this one, particularly with Houston. Uh, the Galaxy have been really frail on one-on-one -on -one defending. Kyoto gets matched up one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. When the Galaxy have been good, they get a couple guys around. Well, there was a couple guys around Kyoto, but he was still able to wriggle his way through. And then just a, a lack of discipline on the penalty um, with, you know, the, the high boot in the box. And, and But, yeah, Jimmy, from there, I think that they did really drop. And you could almost feel before you're like, oh, no, here come the Galaxy. And it was like, well, here comes the Galaxy, the right. old one. Right. And it, it never off. felt it never felt like the winning goal was coming from them. Like at 2-2 with 20 minutes left at home against a, a Houston team that doesn't defend well, you would think, like, okay, we're still in the game. We, we, we had 20 bad minutes. We can have 20 good minutes now, punch our ticket to the playoffs. It, it never felt like that. They don't have that leadership. And, yeah. And you, know, that's, you can see all the big names on that team that you want. There's nobody I feel like that's really taking control of that team. I think it has to come from a center back position more often than not. Because if they can see the whole field, they can, they can control a lot of how the team moves and pressures the ball. They just don't have that. Well, this is, you know, the second year in a row. The Galaxy miss the playoffs. Where do you go from here? Coaching-wise, player-wise, <laughs> what do you do? You watch LAFC play. Oh, oh too soon? Oh. <laughs> I think it's too soon. He's too so soon. Mad. Jimmy's coming in so right. hot today. It's the post-game show. <laughs> I mean, they did a, they've done rebuilds, like, it feels like each of the last Sebastian. three years to a, a degree. Um, and they've, they've gotten older and they've gotten more expensive. And they've, you know, they, I don't want to say they've gotten worse because this team is much better than the team they had last year, but they haven't been good enough. And I think it's time to look at the organizational philosophy because the Galaxy should be the Red Bulls. There's no more talent-rich area in the United States than Southern California. The best soccer players that we've had for 50 years, other than Jimmy, no, have I, come. You keep going. I don't know where you're going. From Born Southern, and California. Raised, Southern California. California. Keep going. And the, and the Galaxy were the first team to have a USL team to bring players through, and they don't get much from it. And they have a, a, an academy that everybody rants and raves about as being a great academy. They don't get talent from their academy. They, they didn't have homegrown players out there. The team that is going to the playoffs, RSL, starts four homegrown players. They start guys who have come through the academy, who have an understanding of the culture of the team, who seem to feel like they have a responsibility. Uh, and like that's, I think that is the off season that they have to look at. Mm. Honestly, I think it needs to be but a that reboot. youth academy shift. That's that's not a short term play. That's no. a long term play. And they tried that already. They they tried to go young with Anolfo and bringing up their LA Galaxy two coach and bringing these young players. They realized that wasn't going to work. Then they go out and bring all these MLS vets like Perry Kitchen and uh, Kamara and these guys. And then they're like, this isn't working. Let's bring Zlatan and try and fix it all. And it never quite fit off the season. Dom did his best to try and corral the group as best he could, but but the pieces didn't quite fit. Oh dear. All right. Well, for more on the Galaxy, let's send it out to Brittany Held, who is standing by with Sebastian Leggett. Sebastian, it has been a roller coaster of a season. 
a roller coaster of a game. How disappointing is this result? Yeah, it's uh, this this result, and we I mean it's devastating uh, to to for us, for the players, for the staff, for the, for this club, for the fans. M most importantly, uh, you know it's a sad moment. I don't know, you know we don't know how this happened. Uh, to be honest, we I mean we came out, we thought we played well, a good first half. A game of two halves, you know, the second half they came out, to be fair to them, but we, we should have done a lot better, and we know that. And, you know, the only thing we can do now is, uh, you know, hope, for, hope better for next year. When you look back at the season, what could this team have done differently to prepare yourself to secure a spot in the playoffs without having to leave it to decision day? I think, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing. I think we've been playing so well, and I think recently we've been showing exactly what we can do as a team and how far I, I think we could have gone. Uh, and yeah, I, like you said, a, bi a big roller coaster, you know, from where we started to where we are now. And it's just a shame that we couldn't show more to, you know, for our fans and, and for this club. In the off season, any big changes? What would you like to see happen to this Galaxy squad? I mean, there, it, it's a shame because I, I thought we had, a, we had a good thing going here. Uh, so it's, I mean, you can always change during the off season. I'm sure they'll upstairs will, will take care of that. But uh, I think I do want to say something about Dom, uh, Dominic Kinnear. You know, I thought he came in and did a fantastic job for us and, and and we love him and if he if he did stay I think he'd be uh, I think it'd be an awesome fit and it's just a shame we couldn't do more for him well it's good to see you back this season Thank thanks you. so much Okay, so with the Galaxy loss it is RSL who are grabbing that sixth and final spot in the West what is their ceiling in the playoffs how do we think how far do we think this RSL team can actually go Mm. Guys, I'll say everyone's hi. No, I'll think say about hi. it. Listen, in the playoffs, what you need is the ability to be very, very good. Right? It's a single game. Anybody can show up on a single game and be great. Some teams don't have the high-end players to show up and just totally ball out. RSL has that. Jefferson Savarino, Jao Plata, Albert Rusnak. These dudes can ball. These dudes, at their best, are some of the best players in the league, and that's what you're looking for in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. It's one game at a time, then it's two games at a time. In any three or four game span, good players can show up and totally ball out. So I'm perfectly fine saying RSL can make a run. I, I think it's going to be a quick trip for them, and mainly because of what I just saw in the last three weeks when it was all on the line for them. The home and away against Portland, who might be waiting for them at, at some point in the, in the playoffs, or if, you know, if they do match up. I, I just don't see the experience in this group. Uh, I just don't see how they find enough goals. But to contrast that, those guys have to go into training tomorrow going, woo, look at us. <laughs> Guess who's playing with house money? I mean, you're going to be feeling really good about yourself and like, hey, we got nothing to lose. We're going to go to L.A., we might match up well with them, we might not, but we're still gonna give it everything that we have. And they have some talented players. I saw them play in Kansas City a few weeks ago. They tied 1-1, it was a good game. They, I thought they had some, uh, some good moments, but I, again, I agree with Bobby that, that uh, I think they can, go, they can go, their ceiling's high. All right guys, here is a, a live look in at Columbus who have just clinched the fifth seed in the East after their 3-2 win over Minnesota, so we, we now can, can say with We don't know the bracket. I know. God, it's, you have it's stressing official. me out. Yeah. This was very, very stressful. Um, yeah, I think, do we, do we think this is a worthy spot for, for Columbus after having sat in fourth place for, for the bulk of the season? I mean, it feels about right for them. Yeah. They're a playoff team, but not a team uh, that's played well enough to get home field. I think they're prohibitive underdogs going to, to D.C. United, but... You know, we've seen D.C. United come into the playoffs hot before and not be able to, to not keep Not with that Wayne going. Rooney, though. Not with Wayne Rooney. <laughs> Let me add and, that. And that is, Let me add that in. That is, and look, we, we, like, home field in the knockout round matters a ton. Home field in the subsequent rounds doesn't matter as much. Because if you get that win on Wednesday night, then you go home and you get another win, you could play tight and play for the draw on the road. And D.C.'s shown the ability to do that in the second half of the season. I still like this Columbus team. I, I think, or talk about ceiling, I, I think they have a high ceiling. And partly because of what I saw last year with their run in the playoffs, they have that experience uh, going down to Atlanta and winning a knockout game on the road. And Zach Steffen helps having a good goalkeeper who can save you against Acosta or pull a save out. Uh, so I, I think they're a year more mature, uh, a team that's better and, and Jossie Zarda is getting a hat trick so he's got some momentum now. Yeah I was gonna say he's a bit of a streaky player so if he's feeling good about himself he always scores in bunches. Absolutely I mean it, what 19 on the season now and he he had gone he had gone cold for about a month. Um, look he, he had a huge game today 
uh, when they needed him. They need more than him if they're going to go far. <laughs> they, they absolutely do. DC United has been so good. Mm -hmm. So, so good at home. I just, I don't see that train stopping, you know? And DC United has pretty much adopted a Columbus Crew style lately. They tuck in the wingers, they have the outside backs overlap, they have Lucho Acosta playing pretty much the exact same way Pipa Higuain plays. It's been really interesting to see them morph into Columbus Crew but better lately. And I would say the reason they're better is they just play a little faster. Sometimes the crew gets slow on the ball. They're the possession team who plays simple and connects their passes, but it gets slow. Whereas DC United it goes to Acosta, it goes to Rooney. They pick up the pace, they change the rhythm, and they're just a little bit better version. They also change their fulcrum, right? And that's the, the luxury of having Wayne Rooney is like if you're if you're Columbus, you know that Pipa Higuain is always going to be the fulcrum. He's always going to have to be the one who, who most of the creativity comes through unless they're, they're able to get awful up the right side. With Rooney as your center forward, he's, he's a number nine, but he's also your number ten. If he gets the ball in the right spot, suddenly he's a playmaker. And not only that, but suddenly he's putting guys, like he's such a great passer of the ball, he's putting guys into spots where they, they don't, you know, where they can do real damage. Guys like Areola and Steber and guys like that. All right, well, guys, right now we are going to send it down to Columbus Moffrey Stadium where Julie Stewart Binks is standing by with Jazzy Zardes. Jazzy, congratulations on notching a playoff berth and also on the hat trick after battling through a very long night tonight. Yeah. How are you guys successful? You know, um, after that weather delay after the ninth minute, it was extremely important that we got warmed up the proper way, but as soon as we came on the field, you know, we uh, seized the moment and got an early goal, and yeah, I know I think uh, the momentum built from there. It was a, a unique situation because at halftime, you guys technically had already gotten the playoff berth. What was Greg Berhalter's message in the room for the final 45? Yeah, his message was, uh, you know, where do you want to place yourselves in the standing? Um, you know, we already knew the results of every other team, and we knew if we win, we'll, uh, we'll have luck in our favor. So um, I think we responded extremely well in the second half, and we didn't give up. Well, thanks, Jossie. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, the biggest question I have, when did Jazzy start growing out that little tash? That was pretty good. What? I'm a fan. <laughs> that was pretty good, right? Yeah, I like do you it. Like, do you like it? I the, do. The juxtaposition of the, the blonde hair and the, the, the dark Clearly, tash. he's got some confidence going, yeah. so he's got to stick with it at this I, point. Listen, it's, like it's, it's playoff, a look. playoff sash. It, look at it, yes. <laughs> Bring it back. I, you know what? It's very distinguished. It's a little it? bit like like late 70s, early 80s I, well, yes. style. Yeah, I like it's it. totally giving me that vibe. It was like a Studio 54 Wait, type Doyle, of thing. Wait, Doyle, maybe you should maybe you should try that for, for the Halloween uh, episode. Honestly, it would, it would take me about 45 minutes to grow a mustache like <laughs> that. <laughs> even, yeah, we, have been here, we have literally been here all day, and I can see it like coming. My Arab roots are coming out, man. Be more worried about the top part. Yeah, wow. <laughs> oh, Kaylin. Kaylin Carr. Uh, that wasn't nice. Oh, my gosh. All right, you guys, let's move it out to the West, where Sporting Kansas City clinched that top spot in the West after their 2-1 win over LAFC. Guys, this is a huge, we talked about it in the pre in the pregame show. Uh, oh, wait, first, first, this is a, a live look, not a live look, but the LAFC had a, had a, Watch party. Watch party. Yeah. And a great time hosting it. So thanks to AT&T who hosted this one. Um, not the greatest result for LAFC fans, but it looks like they said, oh, hey, there's Indy Cowie. <laughs> hey, friends. Um, but looks like they still had some some fun. But this was a huge, we talked about it in the pregame show. This was a huge, huge result for, for Sporting Kansas City, especially after the, the last few years, their playoff performances and having that home field. And that they get to first skip the by. first round. So yeah. let's give it up to Kansas City yeah. for making that happen, breaking the curse, everybody. I'm so excited for them. Uh, great goal here by Roger Espinoza. Good entry pass from Graham Zussi. I don't know where the pressure is on the ball, but that's a good goal. Sometimes you just have to tip your hat to that. Here's a play here, Sinovic. I don't know, you guys think that was a warranted ah, red card? He gets, he gets tossed? I actually do. I actually do. Like he has his arm there for a reason. It's to play the ball. It's to keep it, it's to keep the ball from going into the net in on exactly that type oh, of shot. Just to hug the post, you know? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was waiting for this highlight, and this is because I, I want to talk about Daniel Shalloway. First of all, what a ball from Kyrie Shelton. But Shalloway has been the difference for them down the stretch to be able to get out of that knockout game and not have to face it. His 11th goal on the season, we talked about him in the pregame. But just his, ability, his movement in the box and around it, he has a, a level of athleticism and uh, understanding of space and shoot technique as well. Yeah. That, that's a tight little box there to be able to take that first touch composure. and strike with your left. A ton of composure for a young player, and it's, it's really great to see. 
I would be pretty disappointed, though, if I'm LAFC. Mm -hmm. They had a man advantage at that point. And to give up a goal like that, where you had more than enough guys to defend the play, again, I'm thinking defensively, it just, it's just got to be frustrating, something Bob will definitely address. They're just a little the bit soft. And I think on that first goal in particular, you could see that like it, it still feels like a makeshift midfield, even though we're 34 games into the season. Like The, the rotations just aren't quite crisp enough defensively, so you, you end up with gaps like that. And that's not to take anything away from Roger Espinosa, because that was a hit. Like, that, was, that was a banger. Yes. Um, but but like, I mean, he scores one goal out of every 100. So right, like, you but know. like, it just like there are spaces there to attack against LAFC. I do want to switch back to Sporting Kansas City, the Sinovic thing. It's actually kind of a big deal. They're, I think, 12, 3, and 4 when he starts. Mm -hmm. And they're like 6, 5, and 3 you are just when he doesn't. Like, it's, and it's, there's, a, like it's, there's a worry about correlation and, and causality here. It's not necessarily all Sinovic, but they are in, unquestionably a better team when he's on the field at left back, and now they're going to go on the road in that first game of the knockout round without him. So that's a tough one for, for sporting. All right, well, a reminder, guys, for those knockout rounds, join us for our uh, Playoff Central presented by Audi. We're going to be here Wednesday and Thursday, pregame, postgame show. On Wednesday, it is Halloween, and I heard a rumor that everyone's going to be in costume. Wow. Along with Dax McCarty. I'm going to we'll wear my Matt here. Doyle costume. So, yes. can, oh, <laughs> Oh, I like yeah, it. With Jazzy I like Saunders where you're going with that. It's like perfect. a mix, it's a mashup. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> All right, right now we're going to send it back over to the board. Bobby Warshaw breaking down that Western Conference bracket for us. Yeah, SKC at the top, guys. And as I said earlier in the show, it feels deserved. They've been one of the better teams, if not the best team in the West, throughout much of the second half of the season. And I want to talk about what makes them such a good team. It really is the ability to control the ball and move the ball so effectively. And it starts with having something like someone like Graham Zuzzi at right back. And we look at this play. You guys remember what Zuzzi used, Zuzzi used to play? He used to play attacking mid. He used to play center mid. And look at his hips here. His hips say he's going to make the pass into Kyrie Shelton. That forces a defensive midfielder to slide over and block off that pass to Kyrie Shelton. But Graham Zuzzi makes the pass across his hips into Roger Espinoza. And it's this ability to play a guy like Graham Zuzzi at right back that opens up a world of possibilities for SKC. When you've got someone of his ability on the ball, you can do a ton of things. The last part I want to break down on this is Roger Espinosa's technique on this shot. It was a banger. It went upper 90. But it was a superb goal because he used superb technique. Look at as he follows through on this goal, how he lands on his shooting foot. Left-footed player swings through, lands through the ball, swings through the ball, lands on his left foot, his shooting foot. That's exactly what they teach you as a young player. If you all think of that famous shot of Pele, Pele swings with his right foot. He's in the air and he's about to land on his right foot. Fantastic technique, and that's what led to this goal. Love that. Did not have my money on Pele being mentioned today. <laughs> Graham Zuzzi, Pele. It's a natural transition, man. I, I see it, um, guys. Any thoughts on? The bracket, anything stand out to you that you're looking forward to? Well, Seattle, I think they were probably one of the biggest winners of the day, partly because Dallas lost to Colorado. Yes. Now they find themselves, I mean, look, we, we talked about Seattle way back, and I remember Christian Roldan saying, we're talking about getting past, getting a seed in the playoffs, getting a top seed, so they don't have to play that knockout round. And everybody at the time is like, okay, Christian, like we, we, hear, we hear you. You believe in the team. <laughs> but look, they get in on the last day for an experienced side with some miles on them. I think this team, they've been to the MLS Cup the last two years. Nobody's talking about them. And they're a better team. They have Rui Diaz now. They have a goal scorer. Went last the times before it was Jordan Morris as a rookie trying to carry the load. Nelson Valdez. Yeah. yeah. Now they have a, a proper number nine to be able to lead the line. I, I think they're the favorites in the West. And ah. by the way, it, it, the, I just convinced people myself. were <laughs> people were were kind of right to to be a little skeptical about Roldan proclaiming that because it took literally the greatest half season in terms of points per game. It took literally the greatest half season in MLS history for Seattle to climb up to the number better two. Better than D.C.? Better than D.C. They, like, they, have, they, have, they have been spectacular the second half. Like, I, I don't think anybody in the West uh, relishes the idea of playing them. And the reason we weren't talking about them is because they didn't have a sexy matchup today. Yeah. They had the San Jose Earthquakes, who were the worst team in the West. No yeah. sexy what? matchup. <laughs> That's all. I mean, that, I think you're right. I mean, they should be worth talking about. Yeah. But, but yeah, the earthquakes isn't just to elicit that excited response. Uh. I did want to see Wondolowski score and break the record, but he didn't do it. He'll Alas. be back. He'll, He'll be, be back. back. Alas. Yes. Can Alas. we say though? Wait, wait. Can we say though that was probably a wise decision because 
now he has, you know, gets to stick around. San Jose's like, oh, he can't, we can't move him. We got to keep him on the team. Okay. So he's definitely guaranteed himself one more year. Yeah, yeah. Plus, <laughs> job, I like that. Very job smart. Job security. I like what he's doing. Job there. security. I see you, Wando. I see you. Oh, my goodness. Well, you guys, it has been a jam-packed day full of soccer for a deep dive on all things Decision Day. We're going to send it over to John Strong and Stu Holden of Fox Sports. But as they just announced over the public address to an adoring crowd, the road to MLS Cup, at least in the Western Conference, comes through Kansas City. 2-1 to one today, the winning goal coming when they were down a man to LAFC. What has Sporting shown you going into the playoffs? Uh, they've shown me that they're a complete team. Uh, sporting Kansas City teams that we've seen in the past, they could score goals, they could defend at times, but this team can do it all and they can score from different areas. They have Shalloway, who has 10+. plus. He got his 11th tonight. Johnny Russell on 10+. plus. Kyrie Shelton shown that he can play as a target striker. He can set up goals. Their midfield engine yet again. Roger Espinoza turning up today with an absolute rocket of a goal. But his work in and around the game. Ilya, I could go on about this team. But, but ultimately, John, they're well coached and, and they're hungry. I, I saw that tonight. They, they stepped up on the big stage and they dominated LAFC from start to finish. Are you worried at all about LAFC turning around midweek knockout round? I, I am a little bit because defensively they've been a little bit of a liability. And again tonight... They, they got back in it, and then they conceded up a man against Sporting Kansas City on the road. Where was that mentality, that, that killer mentality to take that game, to get something out of it? And now they have to turn around quickly, whether they play Wednesday or Thursday, we'll find out. But it's going to be very interesting to see, does this team have enough to go again? 34 games, 35 weeks in the books. On to the playoffs for us here in noisy Kansas City. All right, guys. Well, a reminder to join us on Wednesday for Playoff Central presented by Audi as we set the stage for the knockout rounds. As I mentioned before, it's Halloween. Dax McCarty is going to be here. And if you follow him on Instagram, then you will know what his Halloween costume was, which is a very terrifying version of Chucky. And I'm really hoping that that, that makes <laughs> an awesome. appearance in have the, the, the knife? studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was violent. Yeah. <laughs> he really took it, took it to the next level. Uh, props to Dak. So that's going to be fun. Make sure you check it out. We're also going to have World Cup winners Ali Krieger and Megan Klingenberg in later on in the playoffs. So some really great guests coming through. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com for all your coverage. But right now, you guys, it's time to look ahead to the Audi MLS Cup playoffs. We're going to talk a little knockout rounds, set the stage, starting in the West with that first knockout round matchup between Dallas and Portland. Discuss. How do we think this is going to go? Doyle. I mean, like I said, Dallas have not been a good team the second half of the season. Six, seven, and four uh, in MLS play. They've struggled to, to put the ball in the net at all. I know Rudy got one today, uh, but they haven't been particularly impressive. Uh, Portland struggled themselves in, in August and the early part of September, but they've been a lot better recently. They've gone to a 4 2 3 1. They're still a deadly team on the break. And they have, like, if, if you ask everybody who's the best player in the series, it's Diego Valeri. And if it's not Diego Valeri, it's Diego Chara. And if you have the two best players in the series, or in the game, even if you're on the road, you have to like Portland's chance. I might take Sebastian Blanco third. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. When you look at the direction FC Dallas has been trending, lost 3-0 at home to Sporting Kansas City, and then go on the road and lose on decision day. So I, I think I'd have to take Portland with the advantage, just based on form right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go with you guys as well. I've got nothing else to add. I think Portland <laughs> is the better team. I, I really like Gio Savarese. He's shown that he's had success uh, in the NASL with Cosmos. He knows how to win these big games. Games, and I think it's just going to play out here as well. All right. What about LAFC RSL? How is this one going to go down? Uh, I, got, I, got I got RSL in this one. Yes, world. you said. I, I do. I, I just feel like they're going to come into this game with a lot of momentum, feeling good about themselves, having nothing to lose. They haven't played uh, lights out in the last month or two, but I think they're going to make the plays. They're going to make the difference. LAFC showing maybe a little bit of cracks in this mm -hmm. one or against uh, SKC today. But they can be beat, they can be vulnerable. Mike Pecky and the team, I think, are going to be prepared and ready to go. I, I, LAFC, probably the better team on paper. But I think this one is, I don't know, this is, this is my big upset of the whole playoffs. LAFC, I think there's a pretty wide gulf as far as top-end talent between them and RSL. But I worry a little bit because RSL just had a bye, essentially. So they, they're a young team fresh. LAFC had to put a lot into this game to try and avoid this match. This is now mm -hmm. the sort of other side of it where you play a physical match on the road, now you travel back home. I still think LAFC will get it done just based on that top end talent. But I do want to throw in a shout out to Nick Raimondo because 
he's only got so many years left in the league. I think he's going to step up and have a great game. You need a hot goalkeeper to win games. So LA guy. He is an L.A. guy, right? <laughs> Best players come out of uh, L.A., according to Matt Doyle. Best right. players come out of Berkeley. Come on, we all know the Bay Area. <laughs> That's Northern Cal. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, let's take a look at the knockout rounds in the Eastern Conference, starting with Columbus-D.C. matchup. How do we see this one going down? D.C. advantage, or advantage D.C., right? Yeah, the home sure. team. They're hot. And there is a part to this Columbus team where it's not just they weren't getting results. They haven't been playing particularly well. They're not – a hot team. They're not a good team right now. You've got to feel good about DC in that one. They look, yeah. Columbus do look a little listless and static. Maybe having Zardes come out there today and have such a big game with so much on the line um, will give the rest of the guys the the boost they need. It does feel like this is going to come down to personnel though, and man for man, talent for talent. If you look at DC's front four and you look at Columbus's front four, all due respect to Chelsea's artist, I'm taking that guy who just hit the free kick. I'm taking DC United based on talent, based on home field advantage, based on momentum. I just want to zoom out for a second and just say how happy I am that DC is in the playoffs again, mm -hmm. a relevant franchise, and it's a dream scenario for them to not only make the playoffs again, but to have it in DC. Yeah. So that's big. I, I, I think I'm going to pick Columbus, though. I'm going to go against all reason okay. and go with Zach You're Steffen allowed. and go with a, a little bit of just that experience that Greg Burhalter has uh, in the playoffs. The DC team hasn't, they, I know they're hot, but they don't have that experience together in the playoffs yet. So DC United drew 0 0 with Chicago. We haven't really talked about that result at all. That's a pretty listless performance for me. They, on paper, should definitely beat Chicago. They didn't get anything out of that game. Columbus cut their teeth in a really tough match that needed to win, and they got it done. Come on, man. And I think they beat Minnesota at home. <laughs> I understand that. I, and that, that's, a, that's a very important caveat. But, I, but, but winning is, is a good feeling. They'd only won two out of their last eight, and getting back on that feeling uh, is important. And getting Zardes scoring and hitting the back of the net, again, is very important. I don't know. Come I, on, Jimmy. Come with Columbus. I, I, I know I'm with DC United <laughs> because of Wayne Rooney and just their form when he's been on the team, the sense of belief that he gives up to everybody. Everybody <sighs> raises their level to play with him, and that's important. Yeah. But I'm not going to count out. This goes to penalties oh, for me. Goodness. This goes to penalties for me, and I think wow. DC will win it. Who's the penalties? Right. you got to pick Zach Steffen. Yeah. Bill Hamid, that's okay. a good, that'd be a Stood great one. Just stay over there. Okay, last year. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's a really good point, though. I'm just kidding. All right, guys, next one up. NYCFC and Philadelphia. Who do we like in this? Yeah, I like NYCFC. Yeah. I'll start That's first. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they just did it against Philly. I thought they looked really well. It looked really good, excuse me. And they got all their players back. Yeah. A healthy NYCFC team is a very good team. I, go ahead. Oh, I'd say it's hard to beat a team back to back like that uh, in short. Uh, thing, but except the way this one happened. And when I think about Philly in big matches, I was at the one in Open Cup and I saw their inexperience in center back show. I, you know, I'm all about the play the kids movement that you guys are championing, but I, I, it makes me nervous. Two young center backs in the playoffs. trusty has been struggling, own goals, his confidence is not there right now. Uh, I think on that little small field, D Jim Curtin's gonna have to make some adjustments and play a lot more simple, try and get it out of there to Burke and then I don't, I don't disagree with that point. I, I will say, though, after the, the Open Cup final in, in which Philly really did get drilled, they bounced back on short notice three or four days later, and they went to Columbus, and they pitched a shutout, and Trusty had a Team of the Week performance. Mm -hmm. So, like, the last time they really fell on their face like this, the next game out, they put in a good performance, got a good result. So it's possibly there. Um, that said, they are prohibitive underdogs in this one for sure. Love it. All right, you guys, it is the moment I have been waiting for all day long. We've got Jimmy Conrad and Bobby Warshaw over at the board. Jimmy is going to fill out the entire bracket, including who he thinks is going to take home the MLS Cup. That's, Jimmy, a, lot of, that's a lot of pressure. Jimmy, take it uh, away. at t promised us to get 100% on this. Well, that goes without saying, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to bet what I'm picking, then yeah. But, yeah, so we'll start here in the Western Conference. Uh, can we just skip to the part where I think my beloved Sporting Kansas City are just going to win it completely? <laughs> no, I think uh, the Portland Timbers are going to do the business. Uh, as, we, as we talked about, FC Dallas doesn't seem like they're the better team of the two, so I'm going to go with the Timbers there. Uh, I'm going with RSL. Come at me, LF LAFC fans. I'm right here, standing right here. And notice that those two got swapped because RSL is the lower seed, so they get reseeded to play the SKC, the top seed. Which is nice, because the last time Sporting Kansas City had a deep run in the playoffs back in 2013, they beat RSL in the final to win MLS Cup. Those Good omens, baby. Good omens. Yeah. And I also like that we have two rivalry matchups right there, Jimmy. So you're doing all right so far. Thank you very much, yeah. Matt. Yeah. Appreciate that. 
<laughs> okay, and then we'll go over. Can we go over to the east? I don't want to jump too far. Do you want to go? Just stay on the west. Yeah. No. Let's, let's, go, let's go. Let's go east. Let's go east. Let's go east. Do okay, it's east. Uh, I think DC United is going to do okay. it in penalties. I own that one. I got to stick with it. And then over here, I think NYCFC is going to do it. Okay. You're okay. going chalk. You're going chalk in the east. Yes. Okay. So those seedings are going to stay the same. Yep. Another round. These, these are great matchups, yeah, by the right? way. I'm here for you, everybody. <laughs> this is all going to happen. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the West. The Western Conference semifinals. Leg one is going to be at Salt Lake. Ooh, that's tough. I'm going Kansas City, of course. You're going Kansas City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. Come back to these. Come back to these. Come back to these. Build I'm coming drama. back to these. Thanks, the Bobby. Uh, I'm going to go uh, Red Bull. I'm going to get past DC United. Ooh. That's going to be a great series, though. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to go back to the West. Ooh, yeah, I like the Sounders. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then Atlanta United, NYCFC. <laughs> I need a minute on this one. This is tough. Any, any uh, chiming in from the peanut gallery over here? So much of it depends on health. Is Al Miron going to be back? Is uh, Yanhel Herrera going to be able to give 180 minutes in this series? How much does David Villa have left? A lot of questions, Jimmy. Jim oh. Stradamus. I like that. I'm going to yeah. steal that. I'm going to go NYCFC. Oh, I really my am. I think that's gracious. a bold call for me. I, Atlanta United just seems a little wobbly right now. I think that was a phrase that Kaylin used. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> so here we go. We are final four. Pretty good final four, all things considered. Mm -hmm. Got a New York Derby in the Eastern Conference Championship, and then got Sporting Kansas City and the Sounders. No way the Sounders get into the MLS Cup final three seasons in a row. Sorry, fellas. Uh, Sporting Kansas City is going to be in, and I think they're going to take on the Red Bulls. I really do. So Red Bulls versus Sporting Kansas City means that Red Bull is going to host the final, which is great because I'm going to be back here with a and for that game. So I'm really excited about drum that. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. And then roll. they're, like, they're going to be playing my former club. Okay. Well, i got to pick somebody. Yeah. The game, <laughs> would, be, the game would be at Red Bull Arena. <laughs> It'd be at Red Bull Arena. No, there's too much curse on Red, on Red Bull. I'm going, uh, I'm going right here. Oh, Sporting Kansas City, wow. the champs. Wow. Red okay. Bulls can't do it. Wow. I don't think they're they're going to get there, and they're not going to be able to do it. Red Bulls That's, won last time they faced off. That's great. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> that. That's awesome. I, 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 expect, I, I expect that Red Bull's Twitter is already going at Jimmy uh, pretty fine. good right uh, now. Yeah. They know Red Bulls that. lose a final at home. I, I couldn't bear to watch that. Yeah. No way. Yeah. <laughs> No. It's going to be like the Philadelphia Union in Open Cup Finals. Oh, my gosh. They just can't do the business. Wow. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Not too much. this guy on the show one time. <laughs> what? He brings this kind of juju. I know. I know. What a day. You guys, that is a wrap. That is a wrap for Decision Day 2018 presented by AT&T. A huge thank you to Jimmy Conrad for being here. A huge thank you to AT&T for this whole lovely setup that we have had here and for an awesome day. Guys, remember to join us on Wednesday and Thursday. Playoff Central presented by Audi. There will be pregame, postgame show. Again, Dax McCarty will be in studio on Wednesday. And the full playoff schedule will be up later tonight on MLSsoccer.com. So that is great news. You can check it out. You can keep track of all of it. But thank you so, so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed all the soccer today. We will see you in the playoffs, everybody. It's going to be Good night. <laughs> I think we're going to see that. You know what I like about this?